Hello. Uh, before I begin the session, I want to remind everyone to make any comments on my blog, not on YouTube comments, please. Um, I don't want to disable the comments for the benefit of those who are not yet aware that this is where I do all the real work now. Um, but if you know about that, please uh, post your feedback here. Uh, next thing, the title of the tutorials will change to Zen Framework 1.9 tutorials um, because 1.9 is out and uh, all the tutorials are compatible with 1.9 series. So, uh, with that out of the way, uh, I'm going to begin the session on creating modular applications with Zen Framework. What modules allow us to do is to separate the application into a more manageable uh, small pieces. So uh, if your site is doing blogs and then uh, news and uh, you might have administration to uh, keep track of all of that, and then you want to separate those into three modules, administration, uh, blogs and news. Uh, what many programming languages do and PHP just began from 5.3 is to encapsulate the module's content into a namespace so that it can be properly separated uh, from the rest of the application and if necessary distributed. Uh, because this is such a new concept, Zend Framework uh, doesn't support it natively. Uh, instead it has some internal workarounds to do namespacing uh, which is um, unfortunately pretty awkward in a few places. Uh, so you need to do a number of workarounds to get things going. Uh, hopefully in the future versions of Zen Framework they will take advantage of the PHP's new namespace feature. There are two basic ways you can organize your modules. Uh, you can either put each module into a separate directory with its name underneath the application directory or you can create a directory called modules and then uh, put in each of the module directory inside there. Uh, each has some advantages and disadvantages. I prefer this method for two reasons. Uh, first up the Zend uh, command line tool creates a directory structure based on this method so if you are using uh, Zen tool on the command line um, you automatically using this method so you have less work to do and the other part is that it allows you to have the application directory uh, free for other non-module related things so you can put your layouts or plugins in the root of the application folder and it will not um, break up your module structure because then of course all modules are in a separate directory so the command line tool provides us with a create module command and uh, I'm going to create a module for administration at the moment and what that did is it created the modules directory inside of the application and then admin And in the admin, the familiar MVC structure. Now, I want to create another one for library. So I want to separate the library, uh, public library, from the administration of the whole site. And I should now see library folder popping in. Now, um, these are going to be our modules that the user accesses. The next thing I should note at this moment is that you are always in one module or another. Uh, just because you don't see the module name in the URL, like uh, if I go to authentication login specifically, this is actually a part of the default module. So uh, if I do this, I'm going to route the same page because um, by default, as I said, you are in, in the default module. 
So what this means is that I can continue using the same idea and have a default module created. And um, I can continue using application like I did before. Uh, but personally, I would still like to separate every big component of the application into a uh, module other than default. The only thing that I would put in the default are <coughs> things that are shared uh, between different um, sections. For example, authentication. You don't want uh, authentication. You don't want separate authentication for each module. You don't want to authenticate administrator, and then when he goes to um, another place, re-authenticate him again. No, you don't want to do that. Uh, so you're going to put authentication into the default um, module, and you're going to redirect all the authentication requests there. And then uh, once he gets once he gets authenticated, uh, have them redirected to either library module or administration module. So following that uh, ideology, uh, I'm going to move around some of the, our existing controllers. Uh, we have the authentication controller that I want to put in the default. Uh, then the book controller that's a part of administration. And books is a part of the library. Okay, uh, now I'm going to do the same thing with views. Uh, I want authentication to be in the default. Oops, sorry, wrong place. Scripts. There. I uh, want book in the views for the administration. I want books in the library. Oh, I did it wrong again, didn't I? It goes into scripts. And error and index are going to stay as a part of the default module. Um, so that's that we're going to oh yeah and the forms are going to be a part of the default as well now not all forms the only reason I'm moving this folder here um, default forms is that we have the login form which belongs to, to the default authentication um, so if you have other forms, then you're going to create a forms folder underneath the um, appropriate module directory. Uh, okay, so that should basically do it. We have layouts, because I want to share the layouts. Um, at the moment, we're going to have the same layout for all the modules. The configs are going to stay where they are. Um, we I thought I moved this, I guess I didn't. Uh, going into here. Uh, we don't want this directory anymore now. Uh, we don't want, oh yeah, models, uh, DB table, library, ICL. Uh, this stuff will go into, this one goes into models for default. And this DB table was used for querying the books in the library, so I'm going to move that into here. Okay, uh, that's out of the way, so take that out. Uh, all the views should have been organized by now. Okay, I guess we don't. Uh, let's see, default, views, scripts, oh yeah, that needs to go here. And the uh, view helpers, okay, that's empty. And so we don't want this anymore. And we also need plugins to be in default. Because the plugin that we have here for access check, uh, that's a part of the authentication as well.